Welcome back, Sergey fans and analysts of Don. I'm Rain, your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a 4v4 match, because I mentioned before the last one that I think 4v4 is the biggest that will likely work on most maps that still feels like distinct a distinct set of player roles and generally coherent gameplay. Maybe 5v5, maybe 6v6 in some cases. I mean, some people in, I think it was FFC in the stream chat was mentioning 6v6 can be good. But that's more of a it turns into two 3v3s. So, I don't say that completely nullifies my point, because at that point you're essentially doing two parallel games. But anyway, to this game though, Sorash playing Spiders, Mop Mop playing Heavy Tanks, or Tanks, Software Bug playing Cloak Bots, and North Chilean G playing Air, because of course, this many players, you will have an Air player. On the other side, we have Galamesh going for Spiders. We have... Who are you? Ah, Hung Donkey going for... Seriously? Going for... Just call him Donkey. Donkey going for Shield Bots. 400 going for Shield Bots as well. I hope some redundancy there. And Ace Unit going for Air. Appropriately named. Anyway. Software Bug being... Wow, that is forward. I want to get that four metal extra... The four, plus four metal extractor immediately. Because Tabula, this map does have plus four metal extractors all along the center of the map. So if you can get those picked up real quick, that's a major economic advantage for your team. So a good idea to get. And already starting out, we do have Ace Unit... Going for very quick Ravens, I don't think they got scattered out, though. I think I think there's no real knowledge one way or the other that there are Ravens coming in, so I'm guessing what plan for Ace Unit is getting a bunch of Ravens up, you know, four or five Ravens, send them off, kill off a Commander. Maybe kill off a Factory. Factories take about five Ravens to kill. Commanders take two or three. Or, sorry, three or four, depending on the type of Commander. And whether or not it's upgraded. Software Bug, however, losing that center expansion, so nice little bit of... Economy advantage for the Eastern team, but overall the Eastern team is still kind of falling behind. Western team providing a little bit of damage. Not really finding too much. The Eastern team is re reasonably well defended. The question is going to come to when these Ravens get built up, how is that going to affect things? Because overall, you know, some scouting here and there, some harassment here and there, but the Western team hasn't found real value. While the Eastern team, like I said, they're still getting the center expansion. I mean, a plus four for Donkey over the north side of the map. So both teams do have that, do have at least one of those plus four metal extractors, and that is helping. The Western team is definitely finding an advantage as a result. And the Eastern team, not quite so much, I'm afraid. Still, though, the Eastern team is not too far behind. They have the metal extractor again in the center. Not a whole lot of defenses, but at least some. But nothing really planned, apparently, for building that up. I mean, we have right here Donkey, is, or 400 rather, They've got their convicts. They are set up very well to get this plus four over here in the corner. But that's it. No one else is doing anything. I mean, it kind of surprised we aren't seeing Squ Sorge come here, get this Weaver in here, and start getting the plus four immediately. I'm not even sure the players realize this is a plus four. I mean, it's a thicker metal extractor, but I think this is what most players are seeing right now, is just the circle thickness. And it's not always clear that that relates to a different size of metal extractor, because... A lot of maps just have a standardized single size of metal extractor. And then you have maps like this, where you have a few metal extractors that are special. And you have to know that. And if you know that, you're good. But I don't get the impression that that's something that Sorish knows. It's clearly something Software Bug knows, because they made a beeline for this exp expansion. But otherwise, no. And Software Bug currently trying to deal with Hung Donkeys. Damn it. With Donkeys. Seriously. That is such a crude name. Anyway, with Donkey's little terrible name choice, but also a metal extractor over the north side of the map, and that, that might be a bit of a problem. Getting a little bit of help from North Chilean G will be nice. But I think overall, the advantage in terms of positioning is going to be going over to the Eastern team. Assuming they don't lose much to these Ravens, I mean, already some stuff is built up. A source is going to lose their commander. That was a recon commander, too. They could have jumped away from that bot a little more time, but unfortunately they didn't manage to do that. One of the Ravens, two of the Ravens go down. Possibly a third. No, looks like just the two. But still, that is a dead commander. Ace unit did exactly what they were planning on doing. Some retaliation over is coming in from Sorish. Units coming in to avenge their commander. As I don't really know how much success they're going to have. The Swifts being a little bit of a threat. But of course, the problem is the Ravens will come in eventually. And that's not going to do anything. Redback just managing to walk away and dodge. But that's not the biggest thing, though. The center of the map is really more important. 
This revenge can only really damage a little bit. But the tanks coming in here. Mope Mope. Mope Mope taking out all the expansion attempts coming in from 400. And the rogues cannot stop this. Not to mention, they've also taken the center expansion as well as with the south side with Sorish. So, eastern team has taken all of the expansions. They're losing some of their assault force coming in. But that those blitzes still managing to do some damage. Still managing to get in. Get rid of a lot of this stuff. I think I'm going to go for Hornets Commander. I really would not recommend it at this point, honestly. Just try to find some, some convicts that are out in the open and take them out. But no, unfortunately, meeting their end against a felon. Possibly not being commanded away just in time, but... Still, the center has been taken. Eastern team has an economic advantage. They can hold on to these metal extractors, which is apparently a pretty tall order. But if they can, at least two of them are reasonably safe, then that'll at least keep them in a reasonably good position. Of course, there's excess going on, on the eastern side. I mean, no caretakers over. North Chilean G. Mope Mope is getting a couple. It's getting several, actually. So Mope Mope's definitely got the strongest production. Sorish having none. Initially, only having one Weaver. Yeah, the only other Weaver belonging to Gallimesh. So yeah, Sorish a little bit behind when it comes to building up their economy and building out their expansion potential. But they also have the safest plus four metal extractor, while the center metal extractor is kind of going back and forth in possession. But one each for the for the hilly plus fours does mean that the teams are kind of even. But the western team starting to win out when it comes to energy. They're starting to win out when it comes to overdrive. Eastern team kind of needs to be this aggressive. They need to push forward. They need to take out as much as they can of what the Western team has built up. Because the Western team, they've gotten the connection. They have all the, the wind generators set up, all the power plants for the overdrive. Don't even have anything major. Like, they just have wind generators and solar plants. They don't have any fusion plants. N the eastern side of the map, though, there are fusion plants, but there's not a lot of connections for overdrive, which means there's not a lot going on. And the thing is, this plus four is being overdriven. The plus four over to the south is not. And that is huge. But still, the aggression is starting to work out. The Eastern team is taking what it can. It's just a question of whether or not the Eastern team can keep this pressure up. And I don't think the answer is yes. I think this is really turning out to be a tough, if not impossible, situation for the Eastern team to turn into something useful. I mean, if the Eastern team is able to come in here and actually able to break this plus four metal extractor, I mean, we have attempts from the slings, but I don't see that happening just because... They aren't targeting the Metal Extractor, and the angle for the Metal Extractor is kind of impossible. I think the splash damage might be able to hit the walls and hit the Metal Extractor, but it's not going to aim for that. And at the same time, there again is Ace Unit with their Ravens. Swift's trying to come in and take them out, but it's not going to be enough as Swift's are already available for the Western End. And that just makes it even harder to take out this plus four. At the same time, plus four from the center of the map. Some defenses are being built up, but... Really, terraforming probably would be the way to go. That's clearly working out well. Actually, at the same time, there's also a salt over here in the south side of the map. 400 coming in, taking out Sorish's entire force. The felons, however, are out of juice. That does leave them wide open. Not sure why they're continuing to advance. They don't have anything to fight with. They have no shields left. And that leaves the Recluses able to take them out. But the plus four metal extractor was still destroyed. Sora still lost that. And the Eastern team still struggling when it comes to economic parity. But Mop Mop's harassment is at least helping that out. More blisters coming in here, but unlike last time, there's just the defense is in place. The rogues are in place, the lotuses are in place. Yeah, there's EMP stunning them out, but is it going to be enough? And the answer seems to be no. On the other hand, good elimination of a snitch. And good use of the Minotaurs. At the very least, they should be able to come in here and take out a few of these metal extractors, maybe, maybe take out the Stardust. Kind of a tougher target, but Minotaur is definitely the choice unit of choice for that purpose. So, good on Mop Mop. They are really helping maintain that center control. Which has been a huge story of this match, that Mop Mop basically holding on the center while the north, north side's kind of having a hard time, Source is having a hard time. But the center is being held thanks to really good attacks, really good, really decent attrition coming in from the eastern team, and really strong assaults at just the right times coming in from Mop Mop and their tanks. Because that's the thing to bear in mind, is that Mop Mop has mobile and like, mobile tough units. I mean, yes, we do have both 400 and Donkey with shield bots. They do have other fairly tough units, but shield bots are not as fast. Which means there is just that little bit more room for Mop Mop to come in and save the day whenever anything starts to go a little awry. Northside, 
However, may not be going that awry. Looks like everything's relatively safe. The crab's trying to get rid of the gauss turrets, but it's not going to happen in time. And the center is looking very threatening. It's looking very strong for the eastern team. Even though they are behind economically, and a lot of that currently seeming to be that Sorish does not want to build... Actually, this is North Chilean. It's even Sorish. Sorish doesn't really want to build another extra set of constructors. Not sure why. I mean, it might be an experience thing. Sorish... They do have the least experience of... Well, almost the least experience of anyone in this game. Galamish is also fairly inexperienced, but they are holding on fairly well in terms of just general basics. Sorish, on the other hand, is not finding themselves in a strong economic position, and I kind of wish they would. I'm glad they're setting up the overdrive, though, or at least almost setting up the overdrive. They're one wind generator short, but, well, I thought that counts, I guess. Still, though, Sorish can set up the plus four. That will help Eastern Team even things out a little bit, but actually, I kind of like the overdrive. I think that might have been a better idea. Because, again, overdrive is a huge... That's a huge advantage. That's 15 metal per second advantage on the overdrive. But it may not matter. Of course, all these Minotaurs coming in, wiping out all the metal extractors. Western team is starting to lose out a lot of the advantage they have from the overdrive. I mean, these aren't overdriven, mind you, but still, the overdrive is going to become more and more necessary for the Western team to maintain an economic advantage as they are losing a lot of these Minotaurs, but this is kind of the last push. These Minotaurs, they need to win this. Or at least heavily damage the Western team. If they can take out a huge chunk of the Western team's fighting potential, they take out a few factories, Maybe take out some of the snitches. These snitches are being a problem. That is going to be killing off the Minotaurs. Like, target the fat. Oh, I guess they can't really target the factory, can they? There it is. There's the snitch being blown up in the factory. That's exactly what they need. And that should open things up. Might be able to take out one of the factories. They can go from there, spread out a little bit. We'll lose a few Minotaurs to the Ravens. But Focus Fire is not the strong suit here, so those Ravens are not hitting the right thing. And that is a great little bit of damage. The Western team losing quite a bit of their overdrive chain in the process. Though, it's made up for the fact that there's still a lot of energy on the table. Now the Minotaur's retreating. Good call. Retreat. Heal up. Readvance. That's exactly what you need to do. If you can pull that off, then everything else should be fine. But that is a bit of a should. That is a bit of a big should. That should be fine. But those Minotaurs are being destroyed one at a time. Only one of them is left from that entire attack party. And that's a huge blow. I mean, like I said, one factory was destroyed. A lot of damage was done. But I'm not sure that that really did enough damage to justify itself. On the other hand, more Minotaurs are coming in. So maybe it will be enough. Just that extra little bit of pressure. Because at the same time, Sorosh is building out... Or Sorosh North Korean G are building out the south side of the map. They are setting themselves up to at least have a strong economy-ish going forward. So getting that overdrive up on top of that would be nice, but no one is doing that on the eastern side of the map, which is a huge problem. The biggest reason the western team has this economic advantage they have is because they are in this overdriven position. And North Chilean G trying their best to defend against the army coming in here, the combined army of Donkey and Galamesh, but it's not going to be enough. Their commander forced to retreat, unable to jump even, because, well, their jump is disarmed. Or not even trying, at least. But yeah, losing that northern base is a... That is a major problem. I mean, attempts are coming in here to make up for this. Get a few glaives in here, wipe out the Faraday's, maybe take care of this metal extractor. Not a bad attempt, but it's just not enough. The Phantom, at least, that is providing a little bit of room. A little bit of leeway. But North Chilean G having lost their commander, that's that's bad. Uh, that's the entire north side lost. The south side, more or less in control of the eastern team, so it's not all lost, but it's not great. On the other hand, there is still a lot of assault force coming in forward. And Lysic 400's attempt at a Klogobot factory is not going to last too long itself. So at least the dam some damage, some useful damage has been dealt over here. But that was a proxy Klogobot factory. That was... Oh, that was a replacement. Sorry, that was a replacement proxy Klogobot factory. So 400 still unable to produce much of anything. And now we are seeing a proper retreat. Now it looks like... We are seeing Mop able to turn a smaller force into a larger force and actually maintain that force over time. I also like the fact that they have some Ettons in the back, just to make sure that as the Ravens come in for the next pass, it won't do much. Because the Ettons are there, and the Ettons will stop them. Assuming the Ettons go forward with the rest of the force, and it looks like that's exactly why they were regrouping. Get the force back, maybe repair some of them, maybe, maybe not. But hey, get the force back at any rate. And if the Ettons can maintain their position in this game, then, yeah, they're going to be in a great spot. 
Might be a good time to advance, though. Like, if you're going right now, there's not a whole lot defending in the center of the map. Most of the force is in the north side of the map, but then again, Gallimish's force is very scary. And I could imagine Motmo might think it's a time to turn back. Maybe help out the rest of their team. Or at least try to help out the rest of their team, do some damage here and there. Because that's kind of all they have right now. If they don't do that, then that is going to be pretty well it for the game. The Eastern team, they're actually way behind when it comes to economy, so that could very well be it. Overdrive and Reclaim combined, doing a lot of good for the Western team. And indecision on Mutmo's part is doing them a lot of harm as the ends were all so far away from the rest of the force. The Ogre's not able to defend them from anything. So the Atten's trying their best, but unfortunately not able to do much of anything. And also, unfortunately, not a whole lot of coordination with Antier. Looks like the Sword of North G did have some tridents, but they weren't in place. And as Numbo comes in here trying to defend, it is, again, not going to be able to do a whole lot. These Minotaurs trying to burst through the shields, but it's just not enough. Not in the face of all these rapid-fire forces coming around the sides, tearing the Minotaurs to pieces, and I don't know if Eastern Team is going to be going on much longer after that. They're certainly going to try, but that was a huge blow. That was a massive blow. The Western team now with a two-fold lead in metal production. On top of the fact that they're using pretty much all of that metal. And they have this giant army just on the front door. I mean, short of an ultimatum, I don't really see a whole lot of options to just wipe out all these crabs in a hurry. And short of something like a Merlin, I don't see a great option for wiping out the entire force in a hurry. And there's no Strider hubs on the eastern side of the team. Though there is a Crow. So maybe... But I kind of doubt it. In fact, the fact that the crow was built in the first place is a bit of a bad sign. East team was already behind an economy and building a crow. Quite the Hail Mary pass. Now, if it comes in and takes out the shield ball, it would be useful. But it's not going there. I'm not sure where it is going. In fact, it, is it going anywhere? No, it's going over the north side. Oh, okay. I see what's happening. I see what's happening. Sorish has basically been nursing a grudge against Ace unit this entire game. And that's being a problem, because now Ace Unit, like, they're not a big target. They're providing air support, but all you need to do is just have Antier to deal with that. The problem is the center of the map. That has been the deciding factor in this entire game has been the center of the map, and this is going to be pretty much it. Mum up throwing in the towel because of that. And uh, and that is huge. I mean, without Mum up, they were the one providing nice tank support. That forces Software Bug to do a lot of work when it comes to micromanagement. And clearly they don't want to do that either. And it looks like Sarish just wants to get this crow in here. They want to have this crow do its thing. And maybe it will. I mean, it's it's a thing it can try to do. But yeah, this crow is already going to be just completely sworn by Antier. Going in here, trying its best. I mean, it can at least get rid of the air factory and some of the power generation. But what good is that going to do? It's just going to become reclaim fodder. And really, at this point, the game's already over. As we've already seen in the center of the map, I mean, Donkey's forces are just destroying everything. And this crow is really not putting a stop to that. And ultimately does go down in the middle of the force here. And not... It's not enough. Source, that's all I really wanted to do. Throw that in there. And once that stopped, resign dropped. Because that clearly was their only goal. Was get, get the crow in there. Do some damage and that would be it. But that really wasn't enough. But we see a lot of that, just, the army valley was very even until the middle of the game, about the point where the dam broke, really, over the north side of the map. Momo was doing a fine job maintaining a lot of that over here, but, I mean, you can see Momo's actually had the largest army, along with Galamesh, but Galamesh just kept building up. Like, building up and building up and building up and expanding and making sure that they had as much of an economy as they could. Sorish, on the other hand, kind of in a similar position for experience, and also exactly across on the map, and still playing spiders. So, they were in a position where they could have set up a similar situation. But, unfortunately, they weren't really expanding. They had kind of gone for the overdrive, but didn't clean up, didn't finish that all up. They kind of went for the plus four, but I don't think they realized the plus four was a thing they wanted to worry about. And, while they could have gone in with a large spider force into the front base here, and there was no defenses either. I mean, it's not like 400 was trying to stop it. Soros could have theoretically sent in a large spider force like Galamesh did, and no one would have been there. Like, North Chilean G had a forward defensive position to stop Galamesh from advancing. But 400 didn't set that up to stop Sorish. Now, maybe they would have if Sorish had actually done more and been more of a present threat. 
but, well, we won't know. Soros didn't even try. They were going in, kind of messing around a little bit, but they weren't expanding anywhere near as much as they needed to to make that game work. So yeah, that was... That, a really strong showcase of what happens when you let your units die versus what happens when you keep your units alive and going for the kill when you absolutely know you can. Also, making sure you overdrive, because that overdrive was extremely effective. F4 key is your friend. There is a setting to make that turn on by default, but if it's not on, F4 is your friend. That will show all this stuff, so you know exactly what's going on. So it's kind of distracting right now, so maybe it's turned off. But yeah, that was that, so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And that is going to be it for me today. So, again, thanks for watching, and have a good night.